And we are back to discuss the last two episodes of Season 3 of Mandalorian. Now, before we begin, just want to let you guys know, I am feeling a bit under the weather, so if I sound a little bit different, that's because I'm, uh, yeah. I also have a cough drop in, so I don't cough all over Preston throughout the entirety of this thing. Okay. But, um, alright, so you, you were just telling me you did oh, not man. like the last two episodes. No, no. I thought, and, and so people people are going to get angry because I understand that, like, you know, there, there's a lot of Mando love out there, but other than like people in cool suits, um, there was atrocious. It was absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Like really? Nothing, you think so? Oh my God. Like everything about it was, was just wrong and off. Like everything. I mean, it, it wasn't quite as bad of, as, as just like boring mow down mowing down of like randoms they tried mm. to make some of the fights interesting they did but every i like every aspect of the plot didn't make any sense it wasn't internally consistent with the season it wasn't internally consistent with the series it was just a bunch of random stuff where i where i was constantly asking like why is this person doing that why is this happening and and there was no good reason. Like almost every aspect of the show, like I have that question. Like, what on earth is going on? Why would anyone do this? And the only answer to any of those questions is because I think we we think it looks cool on screen. Like there's there's just I it it's like an over like I have this like overwhelming list of things in my head where I'm just like, what? What were they doing? Why? What like constantly the whole thing the whole thing like I I like any small aspect of the show like pick anything like the religion the cults the the tech they had the base the the villains the villains motivation um the protagonist's motivation like every little thing like why is this character here what are they doing none of it none of it made sense it was absolutely worse than book of boba fett because oh, at least whoa. book of but at least book of boba fett i understood what the story was and there was a plot and they kind of came to an end and like resolved it and there was like a journey and growth for the character but there was there was none of that for this entire season of Mandalorian, especially the last two episodes. Mm. It was just chaos, people doing random stuff for no reason. It was it was absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. From from little things. Like there's little things. Like, okay, there's a scene where Man- Mando has to for some reason go through five like glowy red doors. And in between oh, yeah. every, like each glowy red door, there's two guards, or right? And so he somehow has R5 along. I forgot that R5 was was even a character, <laughs> but he has R5, like, like you know, take down door one so you can like beat up two dudes, and then take door down door two so you can beat up two dudes, and so on. Mm-hmm. Which you know. Clearly, it's just so he can not because it wouldn't be realistic for him to take on 10 guys at once. But, you know, you step back and go, why would anybody have a system where you had like five (laughs) glowy doors with two guys in between like every step of the way? Like, why would you set that thing up? Like, what advantage is that? Like, and why would you have pits to the side? Like, and what were they guarding? They were guarding the the cloning chamber that Mm -hmm. existed for what reason? What, so, what was so Moff the Gideon has a uh, clone of him, like a clone army of himself that have force powers. They'd be unstoppable. But wasn't the whole point of getting the clones because they were trying to get Grogo's Jedi DNA? And they got that. They got that in the uh, last uh, episode of episode, uh, season two. So what did it have to do with Moff Gideon? Moff Gideon wanted Grogu's blood so he can have his own clone army of force users. Was I mean, was he taking his own... Or was it like a him Jedi hybrid with Mandalorian armor? Um, no, he himself like he, did was not he have... splicing his was he splicing his DNA with Grogu's DNA? Yeah, that that is the impression. Yeah, he himself did not have uh, force powers in that final boss battle. <clears throat> I know, but like, what's the like, what's the point? Like, what's the point of cloning yourself? 
to have an unstoppable army his... that won't lose this time. He wants to be uh, in episode right, but, seven. But we like, see. Is he transferring his consciousness? Like, like the I don't think so. I don't think so. I think then he just wanted why, an army why, of himself. Then why use yourself? Vanity. He's an old man. <laughs> I don't know. Those clones look pretty young. What? 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 Like what? Like this is like. Do 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 you see my fundamental problem here? Like what was he doing? I just find it weird that, like, this is a very dangerous scouting mission for Episode 7 through Episode 8, and Din is completely okay taking Grogu along. That's... And, uh, for, it, yeah, the kid could get I mean, shot very easily out of his uh, well, IG. Well, every, everything, like, every little aspect of this was, was ridiculous. So, so <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me really set up, like, what was going on here. So, so Bo-Katan was on a planet in the same system as Mandalore. Yes. Which, and she never bothered exploring it, even though it was in the same fucking system. Like, she never went down to the surface. Because it turns out, Mandalore is actually pretty habitable. We find out that not only were there, were, was is there, like, life and farms, there was an entire, like, faction of Mandalorians living there secretly. And, at the same time, they were building a massive base and bringing in countless, I mean, it must have been like countless and countless of construction ships bringing equipment, right? To, to, to like construct that base and bring in all of that stuff, right? Right, of course. And she, and she never, so Bo-Katan on her planet, like never noticed, like they, I guess they don't have scanners. Like they, they never noticed, like one, she never, she never bothered going down to the planet, even though the planet was perfectly fine. Or at least fine enough that people could live there, and and, and when Mandalore, when when Mando and Bo-Katan went before, they also didn't run into the base or the other faction of Mandalorians who lived on the planet. Mm-hmm. They they just went down to the, to the water stuff, right? And then <sighs> you're seeing my problem here, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> So what? Like, how did Bo-Katan no, like not notice any of this shit? And then let's even take it the other way. Okay, fine. Maybe Bo-Katan's an idiot. She's just getting drunk by herself, doing nothing but like playing, playing, um, playing video games. Like, on well, remember, what? Bo-Katan going down to the planet means nothing if she doesn't have the support of the other Mandalorians. When we see her in season two, she only has two of them with her. Maybe she has but, a bunch of other people in reserve, sure. But she also you, didn't you, have the dark saber at the time, so no one's going to follow she, her there. She's not going to be curious. She's not going to be curious. Like even if she went down there and like saw that she it was looked habitable, really bored. She looked really bored. <laughs> like even if right? she went when, down when, there, when, it doesn't matter. She can't rally all the Mando troops she wants to her she, side. She would have found that. She would have found that other faction. They're like three guys, four guys. It's not enough. By the way, one I, of those I think guys it was, that was huge. They had a whole ship and they had like farms and stuff. Not those enough to take on the empire. Ad- it, she barely won First, that fight. Okay, and even thinking the other way, like why? Why if she's sitting on her planet by herself, like why didn't Moff Gideon just kill her? Like she's just sitting there, like twiddling her thumbs. Like that's, what was stopping that's her? That's a good point. I think it's because maybe like I. Hmm. I want to say, I'm going to try to do some mental gymnastics here. I want to say the, the reason she was on her planet the whole time is because uh, Moff Gideon was in prison and then the prison break and then he's the one that sent the TIE fighters and TIE bombers. It's just, fundamentally, it's such a stupid premise <laughs> to to have to have a, a secret planet that, like, no one can go down to. But in fact, like, Moff Gideon's been going to and from it constantly in her own system and there's this other faction building farms and shit. They, first of all, bad move having that faction. That faction <laughs> added nothing to the story. It was one of the, just uh, stupid. One of the guys is another Breaking Bad actor. I think he played a uh, Skinny Pete. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But just like, what was what was the point? What was the point of him? Also, they never resolved the whole thing about the mines being filled with those like mutant people. That's true. They, they That's just, true. They killed them. They killed them all off screen. Mm-hmm. Um. But, By the way, I wanted to say, like, I, I think, like, I think the reason that, that everything was so dis- like so disjointed for two reasons. First, they were going to have a New Republic spinoff, 
that was like mostly the finale of this episode. And for some reason, they didn't change it after they fired Gina Carano because she was gonna like the New Republic spinoff was going to like bring all these characters together for one like Avengers yeah. style team up. But with Gina Carano fired, they probably had to scrap it or work around it. And I think COVID really had something to do with how awful this season has been. I mean, they film Mandalorian on, on like, a, a soundstage anyway, so I don't know about that. But, like, you know, with, with the circular TV screen. But no, I agree with you. There's no reason why. Season 1 was pretty good. Season 2 was great, for me at least. Season 3 was just yeah. boring. I can't, I can't, like, I can't defend just several episodes of nothing really going down. Just slow I just, burn. I mean, I mean, I guess I'd rather have the boring than this atrocious, like, mess for the last two episodes. <laughs> like... Or just just little things like like why is why is Grogu walking around with this animated fucking IG eleven corpse? Like, what's the point of that? And you know what the point is. The point is, sell toys. oh well, they wanted Grogu. Yeah, well, they wanted to sell toys and they wanted Grogu walking around, but they didn't want like the the floaty thing or Mando carrying him because like we go back to the beginning of the season. What was Mando? What was Mando's? reasoning for wanting to wanting to resurrect ig11 none given he just wanted to do it none given zero reason i actually forgot zero i'm sure there is reason. a reason i actually legitimately no, forgot it was never given it was never we we thought of it we were like wait are they going somewhere with the fact that ig11 seen his face you know and and this was the droid that like he you know trusted or or whatever none there was just no reason no one. And then at the end, he like ends up cannibalizing different parts, including the fucking head. So I don't even, why are you even calling him IG-11? It's just a fucking different droid. Like <laughs> what, like what you, like it's more some other droid than it is IG-11. I'm going to be but very honest with you. One of my biggest complaints was the fact that that Axe Wolves asshole was able to fly out of that cave into the fucking stratosphere without losing any fuel in his oh. fucking jetpack. That was... I'm sorry. I'll... This is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, the show being internally inconsistent. Like, they established first season that, one, their faction is really small. And two, Beskar is super rare. Right? Those two things are established. I We've think it's super rare this... because no one went to Mandalore to mine it. I think the Empire had a large reserve yeah. of it. That, But in that episode... How many motherfuckers were flying around with their fucking jetpacks and all their weapons? There was like a fucking huge army all of a sudden. Hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. Yeah. When they established in the first season that Beskar was super, super rare. Like Mando was going around, like going on these missions and, and getting just a little bit of it so he could make like just a few of these weapons. And then he hardly had any of those like little like needles those shooty needles and it was like oh super rare and then no no it's just fucking swimming in beskar or fucking swimming in it and mandalorians as well like you know they're everywhere that 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 fringe that fringe faction you had not fringe and the two fucking factions the fact that you've got one faction that impractically keeps their helmet on all the time and then the other faction that keeps impractically taking off their helmet at the worst times like what the fu like the two factions are ridiculous like they're like in the middle of battle and they'll take off their helmet and be like and start screaming lines or, or they'll be like walking in a cave and they'll take off their helmet like dude keep that helmet on you might hit your head like like they're, they're you, so you're gonna tell me you didn't like the praetorian guards coming out and taking out big guns that was cool the praetorian guards the praetorian guards looked cool mm-hmm Okay. <laughs> I know. I liked episode seven a bit more. I think episode seven was pretty, <sighs> pretty decent. I can't say it was good because, eh. but I love the Thrawn, you know, line in there, seeing all the Imperial yeah, the warlords. Thrawn, the setup. There was setup. I, I liked that one scene, see, seeing all the different warlords. Mm -hmm. That premise was fine. Um, but man, like, like the, the timing as well they're like oh we'll send you those praetorian guards like he has to request these praetor these praetorian guards from this like group it's like that's three dudes three dudes three dudes <laughs> like, like, like three dudes three dudes and they're like and he's getting like a bureaucratic like uh like oversight on that meanwhile he's got you know three cloning dudes chambers up could have fucked up and, uh, uh, uh mando if it wasn't for grogu's jedi shit three those three guys I mean, were those, pretty tough those 
Also, just they started doing stuff like wh- they like capture Mando for some reason, and then three minutes later, why he's aren't like, they kill- <laughs> "Yeah, freed." Yeah, but why aren't they killing him? Like to question you him. Know? Like to question him, take him away. Like wh- why? Reminds me of that Austin just- Powers. Um, yeah, like they're, they they cut uh, Doctor Evil caught Austin Powers, and he has like the sharks with the laser beam, and he closes the thing. Right. <laughs> And he's like, you just don't get it. Dad, I could just kill him right now. I've got a gun in my room. Just, uh, Scott, just zip it. You know, like I, that was it. Like, why didn't they? Like, it was so dumb. It was so dumb. It was as dumb as Return of the Jedi when the, when, when the stormtroopers run up and are like, freeze, rebel scum. Freeze. Just kill him. Just shoot him in the head. <laughs> like, and stop with the freeze. Maybe those stormtroopers were not as evil as you thought and they really wanted to uh, spare those rebel scum. Yeah, I know. But man, <laughs> and that's just there was just so many there were so many moments where I just wasn't even sure what was going on screen. There, there people are flying around shooting. So cool. When they when they were when they were like behind doors before, and then Bo Katan comes in and is like, Go save your kid. And it's like, how does she know what was going on? She was somewhere else. She was like miles away. And then she flies in and she's like she somehow knows exactly what happened between Mando and and uh, and Grogu. It was and then of course like Grogu's just kept around for his 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 ex machina moment. The, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very honest with you. I think the series is suffering because of Grogu being in there. Honestly it should have been about Bo Katan, not Din. His story yeah. is over. It should have moved on to her. Yeah. Sure, and it kind of did. She was the most interesting part of the of the entire season. Din is just kind of there. Also, she, I didn't know she, Din was his last name. Yeah, I know, right? His surname. Yeah. Look, Din. Like, look, Bo Katan is an intriguing character, and then <clears throat> they didn't do anything with her. So she has a very interesting premise. Like, she is a fallen leader. She doesn't have the respect of her people. She's got these two warring factions and she doesn't know how to unite them. Okay. And so how is that solved? And the solution is Mando just gives her the dark saber and then the factions get over their disagreement for no reason. (laughs) You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Now, and wasn't wasn't there something about the dark saber being heavy and hard hard to wield? Yeah, I was wondering that when she was like flying with it. I was like, huh? Yeah, that, that was a whole plot point in Book of Boba. Yeah, God. I'm sure someone. There's gonna be a Star Wars nerd who's gonna be in the comments who's gonna explain it away, and I'll, I'll look it's forward funny. to that guy. Yeah. But, it just goes um, to show. It just goes to show that she was like really the chosen one that she was able to <laughs> wield it so so easily. The Mythosaur also really didn't come into play as much as I thought it would. And they just, um, yeah, they just show him at the end. Like, you know, there's also um, there's also a Chekhov's gun situation kind of going on here. The Tie Fighters and Tie Bombers sent to destroy the capital ship. Where they go? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's resolved. Yeah. yeah, you're right. They shoot it, and then he goes he goes down into orbit, and then he just happens. It being a whole planet, though. He just happens to be able to angle the ship, like, right onto the base. Plus, their fleet had, like, way more ships, and yet somehow, somehow, it's just the capital ship that's left. Wait, also, also, like, why did, weren't they trying to clear out the mines of Mandalore? Like, they arrived on the planet, like, originally when they went to, like go to the planet and she like got that crew of people that wanted to go which to clear out the mines mm-hmm. of course how do you know how many people would be would be needed but they just wanted to like an establish a perimeter or something uh, something right. like that you know something techy like that oh something something military sounding i've got to Scout, establish a perimeter mission. i've got to i've got to establish a perimeter that's something that's something military people do right establishing mm-hmm. perimeters yeah so how many people does it take to establish a perimeter? I don't know, but for like some reason they just choose they, they <laughs> choose thirty, right? I don't I don't know why. <laughs> and then they arrive and they establish a perimeter right where Moff Gideon's base is. 
I think they stumbled upon it. And I think the guys that were on Mandal already, the, uh, the, the, the scavengers, they led them there. I don't okay, remember. So, so like out of an entire planet on where they land, they happen to run into both like a random like faction and Moff Gideon in, in pretty much like the same fucking place, like within like a couple miles. Yes. Out of the entire fucking planet. Mm-hmm. Also, it was also was it also near the mines of Mandalore? Or or am I just like or did it, they just or was their drop point for establishing a perimeter a random location? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be, you're gonna be very disappointed in me. <laughs> I kinda like when the Praetorian guards show up. I really look, I really look, like those Praetorian look, guards. They were so cool. The Praetorian so cool. guards. The Praetorian guards were so cool. Awesome. Look, everybody likes the fucking Praetorian guards. The guns got fucked up, man. The guns got fucked up. The <laughs> guns got fucked up. Look, it's fine because they killed they killed John they killed John Favreau, big guns guy who likes to fuck with his helmet on. I get it. Like, <laughs> what is that? What is that obsession of yours? First off, I would love to see. They don't that take Mando off their helmet. Point, but they don't take off their helmet, and he has a true. son. He like I'm putting two and two together. He doesn't take off his helmet, and he lo- and he's got a son. You know. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> you know what it is. One because you know how in Bo-Katan's faction like. They were all like, like every single one of them were like all really good looking people. Like they were models, all like yeah. models. Mm-hmm. It's essentially like the factions was like the good looking faction and the ugly faction, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't. I, I don't know. You, you don't know what's under those helmets. The the armor. You're, say, you're, say, you're saying that that the the helmet faction are actually even like better looking it's like the That's super possible. hot faction and the only somewhat hot faction is that what you're saying i think that's it yeah <laughs> where, where, where are the ugly mandalorians they just don't have any ugly mandalorians i think they killed them at birth like in 300 <laughs> <laughs> by the way it's not like something out of my mouth is because yeah the cough drop um by the way so there are several leaks that came out before the show came out and uh one of the leaks was that uh, Grogu and Mando were going to fight Big Guns and his kid. That didn't pan out. Um, but what did pan mm. out from the leaks was that Grogu was going to get an IG-88 uh, mecha suit. The other thing that was supposed to happen that Which, didn't happen... Which, by the way, had I had I read that, had I read that like before the season started, I would have been like, that's so dumb. That's not going to happen. Right. Nope. <laughs> Apparently, Boba Fett was supposed to have shown up, and that never went down. That's why I put the thing on Twitter. Like, Boba Fett, where? Like he, I was yeah. expecting Boba Fett to pop up out of the fucking blue with like a fleet from Tatooine and help out his boy Din. Nah, that didn't happen. Um, they did say one of the, the leaker did say that by the end a character with the name D would die. Wasn't Din? It was the Dark Saber, which is not really a character, you asshole. But there it is. The Dark Saber yeah, that's really, that's got really, crushed. That's really that's really stupid to call to call <laughs> the Dark Saber as a character. That's that's not what the definition of a character is. A character, a character is not a an inanimate object <laughs> it's not it's a it's it's a person or something that's you know i mean i'll accept that characters can also be anthropomorphic animals but like you know like but no no the dark saber is not a fucking character by the way i find it atrocious that this episode was essentially uh it says 38 minutes but it's not really 38 minutes they spend two minutes doing um a recap, and I think they spend two to three minutes on the credits. The episode is really like 32, 33 minutes, give or take. And uh, that's kind of yeah. atrocious. When I saw that, when I downloaded, I mean, when I went on Disney Plus and I saw the runtime, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So, uh, yeah, <sighs> we, we that have, was... We have, a lot of, we have a lot of plot threads open at this point. Do we know? Um, I feel I mean, like I... everything has kind of been wrapped up, kind of. What about... What, what about... Um... The, uh, the, 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 the woman, the, the, the female, the, um, Elijah Kane, the, the one that kills the cloning dude, Dr. Pershing, the fries. um, yeah, the... 
Eli Kane, she's yeah, um, she's just there. She's just there. Uh, now that Moff Gideon is dead, I do wonder what's going to happen to her. That plot is still open. Uh, the Imperial Warlords all kind of, like, you know, preparing for mm. Thrawn or Project Necromancer yeah. or whatever the fuck that. I'm assuming Project Necromancer is supposed to be vague on purpose because you think Necromancer, you think it's about reviving Palpatine. I think it's really about reviving the Empire. But that was uh, General sure. Hux's father in that <clears throat> meeting. Play The actor is actually uh, yeah. Donald Gleason's brother. I don't know if you know that. I mean, yeah, it, uh, okay. I mean, obviously they're 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 putting these little seeds for either Thrawn or new or new order kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, and, and so you could say, oh, these plot lines are are eventually resolved in in the sequel trilogy or whatever you can say. But or kind of, kind of. I think the but, plot. Like they they let they left way too much stuff open for maybe a season four of Mando, but I think you should just wrap it up or or just focus on Bo Katan or focus on uh, give Boba Fett yeah. some actual like make him a badass again. Don't make him some pseudo crime guy yeah. who doesn't do crime. I mm, mm. yeah, but generally generally speaking, when when the conflict of the story is 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 fundamentally not understood. Like the conflict of the, of the conflict of the season was that we have two factions of of Mandalorians that need to be unite behind Bo Katan, and none of it like narratively makes any sense. Like we don't know really why they're split. We don't know why they come back together. We don't know why Bo Katan should be their leader. Or they're why split she because they have always leader. have been split. Uh, I, I believe the armor has uh, explained that a couple episodes back. I think <clears throat> they've they've always been consistently like separate. There's always been different tribes. Mandalore went through several civil wars in the past. Um, and during the Clone Wars, Mandalore was actually a place, and uh, the peace-loving Mandalorians lived in the dome cities, while the warlike Mandalorians lived on the moons. So uh, the tribes were always kind of separate. And uh, this is Bo Katan. Thank, 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 thank you for the supplemental material. Uh, that makes that makes you know unknown supplemental material where I had to go to a bookstore and and, and read <laughs> an expanded universe novel or watch uh, Star Wars Rebels. That makes a good story when 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 the answer to something yeah. very important is somewhere else, or or made up by. Uh, a Star Wars YouTuber, which is more often than not. <laughs> By the way, remember Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith, where General Grievous has like that cough. Yes. Did you, you ever figure that? out how to get that cough? <laughs> Didn't wasn't it wasn't it that he's not really he he wasn't really a robot. He was a, he was a, he was a a human android like uh, uh, combination and something and like the, that. The, the he, cough he has a. The, well, well, actually, he has. Uh, well, it it differs on like what material you write from, but the one I like is that mm. he actually had a fight with Mace Windu, and Windu used the Force to crush like his chest a little, so that's why he's coughing. Yeah, or he's got long COVID. <laughs> he's got long. Is COVID. that it? That's, that's that it? could be like, it. Like I said, I kind of blame. Did no one really proofread this season, or they just like spit it out? Oh my because, god! No, this is uh, like I like this is so. I blame like, COVID. I, uh, I don't know, like. It, it's honestly like just it was just cr- I mean John Favreau wrote most of it and it's just like man you you have the you have the ideas of a twelve year old like <laughs> you you you're framed you it's everything is framed through like and the, here's the thing is I think you know like the cool concept art we think we see at the end yeah that's that's awesome I think that's how they just pace their like script they go <laughs> okay concept artists like draw something cool and some con, con some artists is they, like, oh, they man, you're, you're saying they write ass. their scripts around the concept art not the other way around yeah just how it, yeah cool. that's what i think i think they go to the concept artists and they're like draw a really cool picture and the and the guy's like fuck praetorian guard fucking fighting a mandalorian and people are like what that's cool that and is like cool. yeah it is, it is okay cool, how do we make that how do we make that happen <laughs> Then they write. They somehow write it back in. Yeah. Like, okay. What else we got? We got Grogu in like a mechanized like assassin droid suit. That's kind of kind of cool. Okay. How do we make that happen? And then it just fucking. This is the writing room right here, Bryson. You have exclusive yeah. access to the writing room right here. <laughs> yeah. Because none of it, 
None of it makes any sense. Like, none of it makes any sense. I'm just very disappointed because I'm, I know you didn't like season two that much. Season two, every episode was a banger, with the exception of episode two. Every episode in season two was such a banger. They take a, a, a whatever fucking character, like, um, who's the bald ginger comedian? I forgot his name. His name escapes me. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? Um, you're talking about Bill Burr. Thank you, thank you. Why did you start so <laughs> laughing? I don't know his name, but he they gave a no nothing character from season one. Such amazing character, like story, so great. Season two was so good, and then we come to season three, and what happened? What happened, guys? Come on, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka, of course, because you know that's my childhood right there. But after this, I don't know, man. I I really do think COVID fucked up a lot of stuff happening here, and uh, yeah. we might uh, going forward. Star Wars shows I mean, might. If your if your if your big excuse is COVID, if your big excuse is COVID, how do you fucking explain Andor? That's a good point. That's a, I can't touch that. That's a good point. Right. I, by the way, it's gonna get worse because the writers may go on strike at May first. May first. So, how like, do you how do you have? Because look, Andor and Mandalorian season three, filming at you know similar times. Yeah. Andor is fucking incredible, and this is absolute dribble. Same product, you know, this is all, this is all Disney, this is all Star Wars, you know, this is all producers, this is all Kathleen Kennedy, whatever, it's, you know, it, it's coming, it's coming from the same place, but it's just like, one comes out just gold, and the other comes out just this dribble, and I know people are going to disagree and be like, oh, it wasn't that bad, there were some really cool things, but besides, like, something that looks cool in concept art, like, Bo Katan flying in with Mandalorians holding that was the so dark cool. saber. That was so fucking cool. I'm sorry, it was. <laughs> but does it? But but sorry, but once you step back and go, does that make any fucking sense? Why does she have the dark saber? Why can she wield it? What's the point of it? You know, like like once you step back and go, okay, how did we get there in the plot into this like scene that was really fucking cool? I'm actually a little. Um, I will say my inner. I lo- you know I love you, but my inner presence coming out a little when yeah. I say I find it very insane that these fucking Mandalorians are flying downwards, yet their f- their f- legs are still behind them. Like that is some hardcore strength right there. Like that's some core body strength right there. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know I don't know how any of their legs aren't burned up, but um, <laughs> well, they're so, pants so there's are, this... are flame retardant. So. <sighs> so way 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 back in the day, I remember watching this episode of. Um, of Northern Exposure, which is this, this show about this doctor in, in, in Alaska. Anyway, there's this American Indian who wants to be a filmmaker in the in the in the in the uh, show. And at one point, he's like written a script called The Shaman, which is about like this American Indian shaman who, who and, and his like spiritual journey. And he gets this like Hollywood script doctor to like, come up. And the Hollywood script doctor is like, talking to him about the show about the about it and he's like he's like i just i've got this like scene of like like the shaman on a on a snowmobile with like two machine guns in his hands like like you know flying over a flying over a hill like can we make that happen somehow in 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 the story and he's (laughs) the american indian guy's like well the shaman is a pacifist, so I don't know if that's gonna. And he's like, ah, it just it just seemed like a really cool scene. And he's like, well, what if the shaman like stops being a shaman at some point? And then the guy's like, no, I hate that idea. He he he, he just betrays everything I believe I believe in. I hate this character. And you're like, what? <laughs> like all all because he had this like scene in his head of like a guy in a snowmobile with two machine guns like flying over a hill, like. That's that's this fucking season. Like it's just a series of like snapshots that the, in the snapshot in that moment might look cool, but like don't doesn't make any sense, you know, in in the grand scheme of things, you know. Yeah. By the by the way, by the way, like, um, so I honest to God, uh, I didn't know who Lizzo was. Same. Uh, before before I watched the episode, right? I knew I knew so of her, I just, but I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know she looked like either. So I thought this this was just a normal a normal act a normal actor. And then somebody posted in my comments like Preston, the the woman was like enormous. Like how did you think she was just a normal person? And I was like, 
have you been to fucking America? What are you talking about? She was like straight up normal American, straight up normal American. Nothing, nothing. Like if I, if you, if honestly, if I saw Lizzo walking down the street, I would not, I would not like do a double take or anything. I'd just be like, that's a regular woman that you see in America. That's a regular American woman that you would see walking down the street. Mm-hmm. Like that. Like there's nothing, there's nothing unusual about her. I remember um, when I used to work at this gas station at a high school, and uh, my uncle got me the job. And this man in a, like a baseball cap, t-shirt, jeans comes up and asks for cigarettes. And uh, I look at him. I'm like, "Huh, you look familiar." He goes, "Yeah, I, I get that." Uh, and I give him his cigarettes. Later, I realized that was Edward Norton. Like sometimes you just don't like it. Doesn't click. Because I'm sure I've seen Lizzo before. Uh, yeah, in the moment. Yeah. In the moment. Yeah, I'm sure I've seen Lizzo before, but I, it just didn't click that it was her. But, you know, the usual suspects are saying, like, they don't. it's cringy to have musicians in it. No one complained when Childish Gambino was Lando or when Flea was in uh, Kenobi. We've had, yeah. we've had musicians in, in Star Wars before. I thought that was very silly. I thought that was very a very silly uh, uh, thing about right, it but like i mean and she she did fine i like i said yeah, i didn't whatever. i didn't know i didn't know she was famous i just thought she was any other actor and i wasn't bothered by it you but were more, same, you same were thing more happened. Uh, taken in by jack black arriving well right i recognized jack black um but the same thing happened with um ed sheeran i didn't know who ed sheeran was or what ed oh. sheeran looked like when he appeared in game of thrones hmm and so people are like, I mean, I I'd heard the name Ed Sheeran, and I and, and once people like played the songs, I was like, oh right, I've heard that song, but I didn't know what Ed Sheeran looked like. I didn't like, I did, I did think like, why are they? Why has the camera lingered on that guy for so long? But <laughs> they paid for it. him to be there. They paid for that cameo. They're gonna put that camera on him the entire time. <laughs> right. Yeah. But no, so, I, I, it's a shame. Like episode seven had such good potential. Episode eight had such good potential, and. For what it is, action schlock, it's fine. But for the overall Mando Mandalorian experience, it's kind of lacking. It was very bland. I, I expected more from them. When but after... I think even even in the action scenes, like I couldn't really tell what was going on in the action scenes. I didn't know what the stakes were. I don't think they were well directed or choreographed action scenes. Really, you didn't like, like Bo-Katan did, versus yeah. boss battle Moff Gideon? I thought that was pretty fine. It it was fine. I mean. I I I mean I guess like for that moment I knew kind of who was winning and who was losing but there's moments where they're like flying through the air I didn't know what was happening Oh yeah that's supposed to be some, ridiculous on purpose Some some of the scenes where where Mando is fighting people you know you're not really sure what happens Sometimes that sometimes it's okay and then sometimes like a person will just disappear or maybe they fell off a cliff or maybe they got shot. You're not really sure. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. I don't know. I don't understand how, why people are able to get choked so much in Mando suits when like they're, they're supposedly like sealed and hard and stuff, but I don't know what, whatever, (laughs) whatever. Uh, The episodes, the the season in in general, I felt like it was a waste of time. It was on a scale from one to 10. I give this like a five. It was entertaining sometimes, but for the most part, it was just average schlock action schlock. And for Mando, I'm a little disappointed because after coming off, like how great season two was. And then the two episodes in book of Boba that were also good that featured him. We get this. I'm, I don't, I'm just a little, Maybe not a little. I'm just fairly disappointed in what we got. And, uh, yeah. yeah. But, hey, Preston, Praetorian Guards, huh? That shit was cool. Yeah, I'm the Praetorian Guards, yeah. yeah got <laughs> Do you those, have, those, uh... They were, they, some you, people in red suits. There's people in red suits, and then... Um, Thrawn gets a mention, know. huh? We get uh, Admiral Paleon. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh, fuck. You know what I just realized that this was? You know how, like... You know how everything's about, um you know more so they're like oh at first you know you had like one lightsaber against another lightsaber and that's like a big deal and then in the phantom menace you had like two lightsabers like attached together and there's so he's like fighting with two lightsabers darth maul and then and then they just go buck wild and there's a whole arena filled with lightsabers and everybody's like fighting right this was kind of like that like okay we had boba fett and boba fett's cool 
And now we've got like a few more Boba Fetts and like having like a handful of Boba Fetts is cool. And now we've got like an entire room of like hundreds of Boba Fetts and and hundreds of Stormtrooper Boba Fetts. And the Boba Fetts and the Stormtrooper Boba Fetts are like fighting and they're all fighting and shooting and stuff. And one has like a lightsaber. I mean, it's it's a dark saber, but it's a lightsaber, you know? And so it's like you got a Boba Fett with a lightsaber like flying at you and and... And then, oh, and then we got those Praetorian guards because they're really cool. And I mean, the only thing that would have made it cooler is if the Knights of Ren showed up. Yes. And like he had to fight the Knights of Ren. That would be so fucking sick. And the funny thing oh is, God, the dude, Knights of yeah. Ren are actually active around this time. In the comics, All I right. think Amelia Clark's character of Kira from Solo employs them for something. So they are active mm-hmm. around this time. Yeah, so... That that's all. That's all. They all saved there, a man. lot of stuff for Ahsoka. Th- th- this felt like a closing out the Mando arc. I don't think there's going to be a season four. I think we're just going to get a Mando movie going forward. But uh, I also think they're going to cut back on the amount of Star Wars we're getting going forward, which I would be okay with. But um, for the most part, I was just disappointed. It-, it-, it was just them wrapping up loose ends and trying to get Mando out the door. Unpopular opinion. I should... do. I do not. I do not think they're going to slow down on Star Wars. No. Um, they said they, they were going to. It. I mean, how much can they do it? Because they're already like slowing down on Marvel, right? That too. Yeah. So well, you can't well, slow. You can't slow down on both. You can't slow both your revenue streams. Um. True, but I'm sure they're also going to try to focus on other like franchise because they're they're putting a lot what, of Marvel. What, what, Star what do they got? What do they, I mean? They they they're. You can't like High School Musical, the musical, the series. Like you got <laughs> what else you fucking got? It's true. Like, what else does Disney? What else does Disney have? No, it's man? funny. And Disney got... hasn't tried to enter the fantasy genre like Netflix and and Hulu and and HBO. Well, what about for... Willow? They got they had Willow. Willow did not. It will not be getting a season two. And Willow is not on the level of Game of Thrones and Witcher and and all that. Well, I didn't. I didn't see Willow. I've seen mixed reviews of Willow mm-hmm. the series. Like some are like it's fine, and then some are like. It's horrible, so I don't know. And it's really very hard I've, to I've like wa- listen to reviews or watch reviews or read reviews because you don't know if like the person writing this or doing this is like some like secret anti SJW douchebag who like watches Crowder and is trying to copy Crowder or Shapiro's mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. So you don't really know like who actually has legitimate complaints about something other than the person's skin tone being in the fantasy genre. But, um, no, in popular opinion, I think uh, they should have killed Din Djarin or uh, shifted the whole story from, from them to Bo-Katan. Grogu really... I'm surprised how many people didn't die. Yeah. Like, I thought at least, like, older handsome dude when he flew up into the upper stratosphere and then, like, took off his helmet and, like, went on to his, like, little Star Destroyer thing and then, like, was plummeting his ship down towards the planet. I was like... I, I guess he's going to go down the ship. He's going to sacrifice himself. Nope, flies out the window. He's, he's fine. He still has jetpack fuel. That is fucking insane. Still a jetpack fuel. And did, 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 um, what did, uh, the, the other hot, the other hot woman do? Uh, the woman you with the braids? Yeah. Look what, at what, stuff. What, was she, was she doing, she, did she do anything? The she entire... walked around and looked at stuff. But when you, you could tell when she put on her helmet, that was like probably a different person. Also, Moff Gideon's death was <laughs> fucking ridiculous. It was very like, ah, and the fire behind ah, him. Ah, just burned up. I mean, I think it was ambiguous enough that like, maybe they could be like, oh, did he survive? Like, you didn't really, you know. If Moff Gideon comes back, he has to, like, if he's going to come back, they better not make him the bad guy again. What I would love to see is him survive, and then, like, he's crawling in the ground, and then you see Thrawn just take out his, like, gun and just shoot him in the head. Like, no. Like, we, enough Moff Gideon. I love Jean Carlo Esposito. You know, you can tell he's getting older because he had the helmet on the entire <laughs> did time. You ever, but... Did you ever, um, <clears throat> did I ever tell you about, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 2? No. So, uh, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the the first season is about this really old vampire trying to bring forth a like prophesized like child called like the the oh, shit. I don't want to get the name wrong, but it's like wasn't it Eliza Dushku's the, character that was the chosen one? No, 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 a, a, a prophesized like evil character. Mm. There's a whole thing about the prophesized good character and, and it being screwed up and b- it being screwed up anyway so so they they um shit i'm gonna get uh, i want to bring him up i think he's called like 
is he the um go off yeah the master is the super old vampire but then there's like a kid and who, who well, i mean he was made a vampire when he was a kid or whatever and he's supposed to be this like <clears throat> huge huge big bad going forward but the problem is you know it's a little kid so he like ages really fast and so they're like uh we can't really use him so they just have buffy and they just have like spike like kill him off like really quick really quickly this character that was supposed to be this huge like prophesized big bad important character and then he's just killed off like of uh, the anointed one the anointed one is his name so they yeah, he was supposed to be this huge, big bad, like, oh my gosh, the anointed one. And then they're just like, yeah, you got to kill him. Yeah. Um, it said the anointed one was the was was supposed to be the big bad se- for season two. However, the plans were changed because the actor was still growing and could not be believable, a perpetual child. So they just had Spike kill him, like almost immediately. And you're just like, wait, what about all of like that buildup about him being the big bad? No, nothing, nothing. That was it. So yeah. you're saying like just kind of saying Moff Gideon, he just comes around and they're like, yeah, nah, he's dead. If if they bring him back, yeah, enough Moff Gideon. That story is over. In fact, I I really don't want a season four of Mando. We should probably move elsewhere in this world. Gina Carano, getting, you get... are you are going to fail in your wish. They are gonna they are gonna do more Mando. I don't know what you are what you are thinking. I think Mando like, right oh, now the serves sto- the better. The story is done. Yeah, the story is done. Like, Mandalore has been reunited with its people. I, I thought there was going to be, like, a fuck ton of, like, Mandalorians coming back to, like, retake the planet and shoot down the ships. None of that happened. Boba Fett didn't show up. None of that cool stuff happened. So, the story of Mando is done. He, first of all, there's so many things. There's so many things that we have not seen yet that we need to put up, that we need to see. Like what? So, Grogu wearing a Mandalorian helmet. God, I hope not. I was dreading that. I thank God they didn't do it because that would have been so that's, dumb. That's, so dumb. It's, it's, it's totally, totally going to happen. All right. That's you're, you're just like I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> um, you know, <clears throat> I think, I think. Oh, look at this. What? 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 See, Variety reports. Oh no. You know, somewhat credible. Somewhat credible. Mandalorian season four is already written so that the no. story fits perfectly with Ahsoka and more Star Wars. Mando series. season four is written. What are you serious? That's is according to according to Variety. No, it said <clears throat> he said the Mandalorian is about to launch its long awaited third season, but jo- but creator John Favreau recently confirmed to BFM TV that scripts for season four are already written and waiting to be shot. Disney and Lucasfilm have not yet officially announced the fourth season, but Favreau announced he wrote season four scripts during the season three post-production. He had 20 minutes. <laughs> Stressing that it's essential the scripts be done so that the series can continue to fit uh. and anchor the larger framework of the Star Wars universe. There are a handful of new Star Wars series on the way, including the highly anticipated Ahsoka. You're going to like that. Anticipated by Karma. I, I think you're going to like it. Season, f- <clears throat> Season four. Yeah, I've written it already, Favreau said. We have to know where it's going to tell a fully formed story. We have it mapped out. Dave Filoni and I, and slowly you start to write each episode. I was writing it during post production. All it has to feel like a continuation and one full story. What's funny is is that like the way this the way the the season ended was that um, it ended in the way like where their adventures continue. Like, and it's up to you to like in, imagine their, what their adventures would be, even if they never like come out with another season. I thought that's it was going to end there. Their story ends season three with the whole like their adventure continues, and it does that little thing where like zooms in on Grogu and it like. Fades back to fades the black. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it yeah. seems like everything is done, but I, they really should not greenlit a season four. And quite honestly, I think Mando and Grogu work better as side characters uh, to a larger to, an, to another character. They were the best part of uh, Book of Boba Fett, and uh, I don't know. I think they really complemented Bo Katan's character. <clears throat> so going forward, I think we should drop those two and focus on other people. Bring them in, like you know, just to. Just as like sidekicks every now and then, you know, cameos or whatever. Not gonna happen. Not I gonna know. happen. They want to sell that, that Grogu merchandise. 
100 seasons, 100 seasons. 100 seasons, 100 years. Uh, Preston, do you mind if we wrap it up here? All right. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we'll see you next time and in a couple of months with Ahsoka. See you then. Have a good one.